Who doesn't love a good tree? We all love a good tree. Trees are great, and the trees in this video are amongst the most beautiful on the planet. These are the 20 most amazing trees in the world. Number 20. Divi Divi Tree Native to the Caribbean, Central America, and parts of South America, the Divi Divi tree seems as if it can't decide on what it's called. Going by so many different names must have given the Divi Divi an identity crisis. In its native home of Aruba, the Divi Divi tree, or Watapana, is referred to as Aruba's natural compass on the account of its habit of always pointing in a southwestern direction. This is actually the result of the trade winds that blow across the island from the northeast. Even though the Watapana is most famous on the island, it's often confused with the Fofoti tree. These can be found growing on the beach and posing so patiently for endless Instagram posts. Whereas the Divi Divi, the symbol of Aruba, is found growing across the island in the earth. Though there are examples of this tree growing naturally in other countries, attempts to plant it elsewhere have more or less resulted in failure. The Aruba Tourist Board likes to emphasize this point as a positive reason to visit the island, and they would say that though, wouldn't they? Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the sweet topic. Let's talk about the Devil's Tower. This thing in the United States is thought by many to be the remains of a very ancient and colossal tree. Just look at the size and scale of the thing. If the rumors about the tree are true and this was once the base of a tree, just imagine how amazing and huge that tree would have been. Truly makes you understand how small that you are. As always, let us know your thoughts by commenting down below using the hashtag sweet topic. Number 19. Silk Cotton Trees One of the largest trees in the American tropics, the silk cotton, or Ceiba tree, has long been of great significance in the lives of many people who live in the region. These massive deciduous trees are fast growing and regularly reach heights of 80 feet or more, and the largest one ever measured was 240 feet tall. The name of the tree derives from the fruits that it bears. These oval-shaped fruits contain a lot of seeds, which are surrounded by a dense pad of cotton-like fibers. When the fruits ripen, these fibers will then rain down from the trees, thus giving the trees the name of silk cotton. In Asia, the stuff is known as kapok and is used in many different ways. often as insulation or padding in quilts and flotation devices or for pillows and mattresses. As well as the fibers, the tree's flowers are considered an important source of nectar for bees and bats, and it's actually the bats that do most of the pollinating of these night-blooming trees. Then there's the additional folklore element that surrounds the tree. Its bark is used in a traditional aphrodisiac concoction, and the tree has featured heavily in ancient Mayan mythology. The tree is considered sacred in some places in South South America even to this day. Number 18. Ginkgo Biloba the ginkgo biloba tree is also known as the living fossil, and that's because this amazing tree is one of the oldest living tree species in the entire world. Remarkably, it can be traced back over 350 million years. The word ginkgo comes from a Chinese word meaning silver apricot, although the fruits on this particular tree are not really comparable with a nice tasty apricot. For a start, when they mature after autumn, the fruits kind of stink. Apparently, they smell a lot like rancid butter butter when they're busy ripening. So that's not really nice and apricotty at all. The tree is also known for containing a load of stuff that's been utilized in alternative or herbal medicines. Lots of people take supplements containing ginkgo biloba, and in fact, it's Europe's most popular and top-selling herbal medication. The magical stuff is extracted from the leaves, which contain stuff called ginkloglides, and this is believed to help improve circulation of the blood in the body, especially to the brain. So it's become popular for relieving the symptoms of such varied conditions as Alzheimer's disease, tinnitus, and Renaud's syndrome. Number 17. 
Rhododendron. Well, what the actual heck is this doing here? The rhododendron's not a tree at all. It's actually a shrub. Now I know you'll be sure to tell me all about this gigantic classification calamity in the comments below. I can't even believe we've made such a heinous error in the first place. Anyways, since we're already here, we may as well have a little bit of information about the old rhododendron shrub. The name rhododendron can refer to any one of a massive group of 1,024 different woody plants. These shrubs are widespread in the world and can be found in enormous quantity across Asia, but they're also seen frequently in the United States with a particular concentration of examples in the Northwest. In California and in the Appalachian Mountains, the rhododendron is actually the state flower of both West Virginia and Washington. But these shrubs are not always as popular wherever they go. There are some species of the rhododendron that are actually toxic to grazing animals, and the pollen collected by bees from these flowers may also make honey that makes people ill. The rhododendron ponticum is an invasive species in the United Kingdom and Ireland and has made a proper nuisance of itself spreading to the woodlands where it should not be and putting up new shoots quicker than people are even able to take down the naughty plants in the first place. Number 16. Boabab Trees Boabab trees can grow to become absolutely massive. These colossal things can actually grow to be over 100 feet tall and may have trunks with a diameter as fat as 33 feet. That's a sizable waistband measurement indeed. Native to the island of Madagascar, to the mainland continent of Africa, and also to Australia, the boabab is one of the classic shapes on the African landscape in particular. These large and interestingly shaped trees can also be found in many parts of Asia where they've been introduced over time. These trees may grow to be very old, and there's actually a tree in Madagascar which has been named Grandmother, estimated to be a remarkably spry 1600 years old. The boabab tree is a useful and valuable source of food. Both the leaves and the fruit of the tree are actually edible. The leaves are often used in cooking as a leaf vegetable, and the fruit of the tree varies in flavor depending on the specific species. For example, the white pith of the boabab in Australia has a tart citrus flavor known to taste like sherbet. In Angola, the dried fruit of the boabab is often boiled and then used for juice or desserts. However, in Zimbabwe, the fruit is often eaten fresh or stirred into porridge and then added into a drink. Number 15. Japanese Maple in Portland, Oregon. Now, Obviously, the Japanese maple tree is native to Japan, but it has found its way into Portland, Oregon, and has been really showing off there. This is actually one really famous tree, because the Japanese maple tree in the Japanese garden in Portland has been featured by National Geographic, and it has a legion of fans, and its very own online group dedicated to documenting the ever-changing beauty of the magnificent tree. The tree has become the subject of many works of art as well, and has captured the attention of so many nature lovers with its stunning seasonal displays of rich reds, russets, golds, and greens. Did you ever see a more photogenic tree? I challenge you to find one. Native to Japan, China, Korea, and Mongolia, the Japanese maple is a deciduous shrub or small tree, which can reach heights of up to 52 feet and widths of as much as 33 feet. But the size of these trees pales in comparison to the colors that it produces. This beautiful tree has been cultivated in many countries since the 19th century and has remained popular ever since. Number 14. Methuselah. This one is intriguing. Methuselah is one of the oldest trees known to humankind. This is an ancient 4,853-year-old Great Basin Brittle Scone Pine Tree. Methuselah can be found growing in the high white mountains of eastern California's Inyo County. The thing about this tree is really its extraordinary age. There's no other non-clonal tree on Earth that has actually had its age measured and confirmed to be so very old indeed. 
and it would need to be pretty old to live up to its namesake. Methuselah was a biblical figure about whom was written that he lived for more than 900 years, so this tree is doing sterling work so far. There are other brittle scone pine trees that are known to be very long-lived. One, which was chopped down in 1964, was estimated to have been 4,844 years old at the time, and other trees of this species have allegedly been recorded with similarly ancient roots. Currently, Methuselah is the eldest and is deemed such a precious tree that its exact location is a closely guarded secret which is protected by the United States Forest Service. So, shh, don't tell anyone. Number 13. General Sherman Sequoia Tree from one super old tree to another, this time we have the comparably youthful General Sherman. At around 2400 to 2800 years old, this tree is a mere baby next to old Methuselah, but what this guy lacks in years, he makes up for in girth. General Sherman is one of the largest currently living trees, and that doesn't mean that this chap is the biggest ever. Others have indeed been recorded with larger vital statistics, but sadly there are no longer the alive category. This tree is a giant sequoia located in the giant forest of Sequoia National Park in Tulare County, California. General Sherman is officially the largest known single stem tree in the world, and this mighty sequoia has an estimated volume of around 52,508 cubic feet and a height of 274.9 feet. Although the tree is not the tallest in the world, it is the largest, as this is measured by its volume and mass, rather than its height. So go figure. General Sherman is pretty special, even though there have been others before him, and there are trees in the world that have grown taller. This tree is an important and precious piece of the natural history of the United States, but it does need protecting. Californian wildfires affect huge areas of forest every year and can cause untold damage to ancient woodland, so when there are fires anywhere near old General Sherman, the Forest Service takes extra precautions to protect him and will wrap the tree in aluminum foil. But the trouble is that this snazzy outfit can make the other trees jealous. You know, they go green with envy. Number 12. Angel Oak Tree the angel oak tree is located about 12 miles away from Charleston, South Carolina, and it's one of the oldest living oak trees in the South, considered a real gem in the heart of this historic area. More than 40,000 people visit the angel oak each year and marvel at its age and beauty. Believed to be around 400 years old, angel oak has had a long while to grow now, so this remarkable tree has reached 66 and a half feet tall, which is approximately the height of a six-story building. The trunk of this mighty oak tree has a tubby circumference of 28 feet. Her longest branch measures 187 feet long, so this tree is kind of a big deal. Oh, and one other thing, angel oak? Well, it's haunted. Yes, the tree is bound up in the history of slavery in the area, and as the legend goes, bodies of slaves were hung from its branches, and vultures would come to feast on them. This is what people believed had caused the curse of the tree. There's also a story that it was sacred to Native American people and stands on Native American ground, and it's led many to believe that the place is deeply spiritual and ghostly figures can be seen congregating around its base. Charleston, South Carolina is one of the most haunted places in America and has a ghost story for almost all of their historical places. The angel oak is at once beautiful and moving. Its ancient branches may indeed connect us to times past and people who have sat in her shade and lived and died beside of her. That's what a truly amazing place can do, after all. Number 11. The Trees of Dead Valais the area known as Dead Valais in Namibia is an extraordinarily bizarre looking landscape. It means dead marsh, which is a fairly accurate description of this desiccated, stark environment. The parched earth in the Dead Valais of Namibia contains no moisture to sustain living things, and as such, all the trees that were once in this area have been reduced to blackened skeletal remains. The landscape would be created when the clay pan was formed by the flooded river, and this created temporary 
temporary pools which allowed the trees to grow. But when the area was hit by a drought and the climate would change, the surrounding sand dunes moved into the space and blocked the river. The trees then died as there was not enough water to sustain them, and it's believed that this all occurred between 600 and 700 years ago. The remains of the trees have been blackened and scorched through the centuries of exposure to the harsh sunlight. The landscape that does remain in this hostile environment has been used as a location in surreal and nightmarish films like The Cell and The Fall. Number 10. Dragon Blood Tree This one has a name that sounds as though it may be straight out of the pages of a fairy tale. The Dragon's Blood Tree is an evergreen that's only found on Yemen's Socotra Archipelago. It's an ancient and revered tree with a distinct appearance and blood-red sap. The open umbrella shape of the Dragon's Blood Tree is utterly unique, and the clusters of these trees on this ancient landscape look as if they were conceived in a fantasy film. But the magic of these trees isn't the only thing that's astonishing. They bear a deep red oozing resin, which gives the tree the appearance of bleeding, but which also has some unique medicinal properties. The sap has been used to treat all manner of ailments from ulcers to diarrhea. It's also famed for its use as a varnish for violins, dyeing wool, glue for pottery, and even as makeup and toothpaste. This is the only place in the world where this extraordinary species of tree grows, and as the climate changes and war continues to rage on the mainland, the future of this unbelievable place looks uncertain. Number 9. Pando Tree Although it appears to be a mighty forest, this is actually one of the world's largest living organisms. The forest is made of 47,000 genetically identical quaking aspen trees, all of which stem from one single root system. Quaking aspens can reproduce by putting out seeds, but they more commonly send up sprouts from their root system, which forms a mass of small trees known as a clone. Known as pando, which is the Latin word for I spread, this organism has been growing in Utah's Fish Lake National Forest for at least 80,000 years, but sadly, the 107 acres of living forest is actually dying. It's been found to be in dramatic decline over the last few decades, and there's a fear that the pando might not make it. Deer and cattle have been eating the new saplings before the clones are able to fully regenerate, and this has had a dramatic impact on the size and scale of the grove. But really, the problem has been building over the last century. There's a lack of apex predators in the area, and those that used to control populations of mule deer were aggressively hunted by humans and now do not exist in large enough numbers to keep the deer contained. Also, the cattle that cause the damage are allowed by law to graze in the area, despite the damage that it's causing to the historic landscape. A few small adjustments to the way that things are done could have a large and lasting impact on this incredible organism before it's too late. Number 8. Wisteria Tunnels, Japan Wisteria is a kind of flowering vine that can be grown into extraordinary shapes, and nowhere in the world is better at doing that than Japan. Each year, the Karachi Fuji Gardens in Kitakayushu on the Japanese island of Kayushu plays host to the Wisteria Festival. This annual showing of all things Wisteria-based is home to these incredible Wisteria tunnels, tunnels that are built with beautiful cascades of flowering Wisteria, which is trained to grow across the arches and hang in in delicate and graceful fashion for full Instagram effect. The whole place has something reminiscent of a magical fairyland. Its delicate pale pastel hues of amethyst and green create softly shaded canopies of dappled light and an artist's palette of gentle colors. It is a massively popular event, and to visit during blooming season requires advanced booking. So if you're heading that way, do make sure that you get your ticket ahead of time, or you may end up wisterically disappointed. Number 7. Rainbow Eucalyptus the rainbow eucalyptus is a fast-growing tall species of tree that easily reaches heights of up to 246 feet, having a diameter of up to 94 inches. But the size and fast-growingness of this gum tree is not what actually makes it stand out from the crowd. What does that is its 
tremendously colorful bark. The rainbow eucalyptus tree has smooth orange-hued bark which peels off in strips, and as it does, it reveals a veritable rainbow of colorful layers beneath. There will likely be pale green, orange, red, and purple as the bark exposes different stripes of color. This is most vibrant and interesting in appearance in the natural environment of the rainbow eucalyptus tree itself. Those trees that are cultivated do not seem to display such bright and varied colors. However, in the rainforests of Indonesia, the Philippines, and Papua New Guinea, where the tree is native, the displays are vivid and truly unique. Number 6. Dark Hedges, Northern Ireland if you can just imagine a spooky and atmospheric tunnel of trees, like in a fantasy novel or a fairy tale, likely as not you've mustered up an image that's something a lot like the Dark Hedges. Even the name of the place evokes the same kind of sense of something slightly mysterious and sinister. The Dark Hedges is actually a real place, though. This avenue of beech trees lines the edges of a road between Stranicum and the Armoy in County Antrim, Northern Ireland. It would be planted in about 1775 when Grace Hill House was built. 150 trees were actually planted alongside the road to the estate. But of course, this is no ordinary tree-lined street. This one's actually haunted. As the legend goes, the hedges are visited by a ghost that's known as the Grey Lady, who is seen dashing from tree to tree across the road. Very spooky indeed. This place is so very evocative that it's also a filming location which has popped up on the screen upon several occasions, most notably being used in HBO's Game of Thrones, and you can see why. Number 5. Cherry Blossoms, Japan all over the world, cherry blossoms mark the arrival of spring. However, in Japan, the cherry blossom season is taken quite seriously and is frankly a total carnival of displays which attracts visitors from all across Japan and the rest of the world to see the spectacle in full bloom. Japan really goes nuts for these cherry blossoms. As the buds begin to open, people all across Japan have picnics and throw parties in celebration of the beautiful season. The time that the blossoms are full and blooming is transient, and the part of the attraction of these trees is that ephemeral beauty. It marks the changing of the season and welcomes in warming weather. The cherry blossom is such a significant thing in Japan that it's no exaggeration to call the phenomenon a national obsession. Cherry blossoms festivals are held all over the country country in parks and other large gardens, and the cherry blossom appears in traditional Japanese art and design during the season. It's not unusual to find food and drink flavored with Sakura or even cherry blossom itself. Number 4. Taprom, Cambodia the temple at Tsabrom in Cambodia is undergoing a trees formation. The 12th century temple at Angkor in Cambodia is slowly being reclaimed by nature. This UNESCO World Heritage Site was built by a king from the Khmer Empire, completed in 1186 AD and dedicated as a Buddhist monastery. Tsabrom is the most popular of tourism hotspots in the whole of Cambodia. This spectacular temple is in a remarkable condition in the middle of the jungle. The roots of trees grow through all the structures in the temple and make this a completely unique and fascinating place to visit. It's also inspired plenty of creative minds and has turned up as a location in the movie Tomb Raider. What do you think of this unusual place? The way that the trees wrap around the structures is kind of fascinating, isn't it? Have you ever seen anything that was being reclaimed by nature in such a way? As always, let me know your splendid thoughts in the comments section down below. Number 3. Blue Chacaranda, South America the beautiful jacaranda tree is native to Argentina, Brazil, Uruguay, Central America, and the Caribbean. There are actually more than 49 known species of it out there in the world, and this blue jacaranda is one of the most beautiful of them all. This tree can reach heights of up to around 30 feet or even more, and it has gray-brown bark that begins smooth in the younger plant and then becomes scalier as the tree ages. 
branches of the tree are zigzag shaped and have a reddish brownish color with very large leaves that are made up of lots of smaller ones. As the jacaranda is such a pretty tree, it's cultivated all over the world, but it really prefers a more warmer climate and is not that big of a fan of frost. This tree can be found regularly in California's temperate climate as well as in Texas and Florida, but there are some places in the world which are less pleased by the tree's appearance. In South Africa and parts of Australia, the tree is actually considered an invasive species where it actually threatens the native versions of the tree. Number 2. Banyan Trees, India the banyan tree is native to the Indian subcontinent and is India's national tree, considered to be sacred by many people across the country. These trees are best known for having some of the widest canopy coverage on Earth and for their aerial roots, which grow downwards. The figs that the trees produce are eaten by a number of different animals, especially birds, which help the figs' seeds to germinate faster once they're digested. The largest known banyan tree in the world can be found in India. It's located in a botanical botanical garden in the state of West Bengal near the city of Kolkata, formerly known as Calcutta. Known simply as the Great Banyan Tree, this massive living tree is estimated to be at least 250 years old and its exact age is not certain, but it's believed to be around this age since it's referenced in certain 19th century books. The tree itself is the biggest attraction at the botanical gardens and brings in more visitors than anything else on offer there. It's so very famous that this tree has even appeared on Indian postage stamps. Number 1. Spider Trees, Pakistan Back in 2010, devastating and unprecedented flooding swept across Pakistan. This obviously had numerous effects, many of which were the sort of things you would imagine, but some were kind of unexpected, one of which was the behavior of the country's arachnid population. Suddenly, with waters rising all around them, Pakistan's spiders took to the trees in order to escape the perilous situation, and they stayed there for quite a long time. Floodwaters took forever to begin to recede, so those spiders set up homes in the trees. A fifth of the country was then covered in water, so that meant that millions of spiders were suddenly busy building new webs in their temporary refuges in the trees. The result of this strange event was the spooky-looking phenomenon of trees wrapped in spider webs suddenly appearing all around. It looks like someone went wild with the Halloween decorations, but strangely enough, as well as adding an eerie appeal to the flooded landscape, the mass of spiders at this new height spelled bad news for for the mosquito population. Now usually the mozzies would thrive with all that stagnant water just laying around like that, and there would usually be a large spike in cases of deadly malaria, but this feared event never happened. An unexpected but helpful side effect of the tree-dwelling arachnids was that the spiders kept the mosquitoes to a minimum and saved many people from becoming victims of the sickness. And there you have it, a stroll throughout some of the planet's most interesting and amazing trees. I hope that some of these amazing places have inspired you to appreciate the diversity of our natural world. What did you think of these natural beauties? Which one was your favorite? And do you have any excellent tree-based stories to share? As always, let me know your fascinating thoughts in the comments below. Be sure to check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.